Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When a fighter is critically compromised and destined for an imminent crash, the pilot is left with only one lifeline, which is egressing from the aircraft. Due to the dramatic nature of egressing an aircraft, these ejection seats have undergone meticulous testing to prove their reliability and effectiveness in evacuating the pilot from his death trap. As testing an ejection seat remains a daunting hurdle, the U.S. military has built a one-of-a-kind test track that runs 10 miles in length. The test track located at Holloman Air Force Base in the United States serves as the ideal test bed for conducting egress system tests. Despite the fact that this test spans only a few seconds, airmen have to spend months preparing the track and test sleds. This test track has three different rail tracks. Two of them run the entire length of 50,971 feet while a shorter tertiary track is only 15,201 feet long. Usually, the test vehicle, which is the sled, is accelerated along the track with the help of solid rocket motors. A sled is connected to the steel rails via slippers that wrap around the rail for better lateral and vertical stability. With all those capabilities, the Holloman High Speed Test Track provides the ideal ground for conducting edge-of-envelope testing with minimal cost and risk. Out of all the tests conducted, testing ejection seats has been the most challenging. Whenever there's, there's a big change, if you're uh, adding weight to a helmet, for instance, if you're changing your flight gear, uh, if you need to change a sequencer, or if you need to change componentry on a seat, uh, we, we need to check that out before it's going to be fielded out in the fleet. Uh, so that's, that's a large part of our job here uh, and drives uh, our egress mission. So our impact to the Air Force is, is directly supporting the warfighter. And that is, what we're after is to make sure if they have to pull that handle uh, in, in a uh, egress event, that no kidding, they're gonna be as safe as possible. That's what we're here to do, is to collect that data, verify that, that everything has been accounted for and that the seat is designed in such a way to maximize survivability. While the tests were conducted with humans, they proved to be ineffective. And the risks were off the charts. As a result, high-tech mannequins stuffed with sensors were used. We're trying to simulate the head accelerations, the neck loads, the spinal loads um, that occur during that high-speed ejection and determining if the ejection seats that we're interested in will be within safe limits that the Air Force has established over the years.
they were made to replicate a human pilot in every aspect. These mannequins, serving as anthropometric test devices, are utilized for extensive data acquisition beyond the capabilities of their human counterparts. The data collected from the embedded sensors remains the basis for alterations done to the ejection seats. In addition to egress testing, the track is used for hypersonic missile testing as well. Things get complicated with hypersonic tests, as the sled should reach hypersonic speeds, surpassing Mach 5. Typically, the test article is recovered after the test. This allows engineers to conduct post-test examinations and collect vital information. There are ground-fixed optical cameras to catch the action along the test track. In addition to the Holloman test track, the 10,000-foot sled track at Sandia National Labs caters to a unique set of testing demands. The test track is accompanied by three explosive test pads that provide a controlled environment for high-velocity impacts. For impact tests, the lab prefers reverse ballistic tests, where the target is accelerated towards the stationary test piece. This creates more room for better data acquisition, as the instrumented test unit is hardwired to a mobile instrumentation unit that records data. The advanced 3D extensive diagnostics at Sandia Lab provide critical insights into the weapon systems and material performance during the impacts. With the proven track record of sled tests, NASA is utilizing the test track at Sandia National Lab to test its cutting-edge navigation system. The Navigation Doppler LiDAR, or NDL, is designed to acquire ultra-precise velocity and range measurements of moving objects. During the test, the team stationed the NDL units and let the target travel at 450 miles per hour on the sled. The unit calculated the speed and range measurements when the sled was on the move. The Landing and Impact Research Facility in the Langley Research Center, or aptly named Gantry, facilitates both land and water crash testing. The test facility tested the CST-100 Starliner crew capsule for its innovative landing system, which uses six airbags to cushion the impact upon landing. The new system opens more room for landing the capsule, as it has the ability to land on both solid ground and water bodies. Compressed nitrogen bottles inflate the airbags seconds before the touchdown. 
children without a seatbelt. The same facility is used for testing the crash worthiness of commercial aircraft. Anthropometric test devices, or dummies, are placed inside a fuselage or a cutout section and then dropped. These instrumented dummies were fitted with transducers to measure the loads and strains exerted on the body from the crash. Unlike the Starliner, the Orion spacecraft employed the conventional splashdown method in the ocean for its return to Earth. To test the splashdown of the Orion spacecraft, the engineers at the Langley Research Center built a 20-foot deep hydro impact basin. During the test, dummies were placed inside the mock-up crew capsule to evaluate the biomechanical loads on the occupants. Once everything was set up, engineers commenced the test by releasing the capsule from a height of 14 feet. After the successful completion of tests, the Orion crew capsule was launched atop the space launch system during the Artemis 1 mission. The mission lasted 25 and a half days and ended in December 2022 after a successful splashdown of the capsule into the Pacific Ocean. Upon the splashdown, it is time for the landing and recovery team to spring into action. Divers reach the capsule and attach the horse collar around the capsule. The winch line that tows the capsule is then connected to the horse collar. Five orange-colored uprighting backs are inflated to keep the capsule upright during towing. Once the winch is tethered, the capsule is towed into the well deck of the ship. The team receives adequate training on both procedures and hardware usage, which is vital for recovery. A series of recovery tests are carried out under different conditions to train the team for the most exacting conditions. In parallel with testing, a different team analyzes the waves and decides the best course that minimizes wave impact to tow the capsule into the ship. In industries like aeronautics and space exploration, even a marginal error carries out profound consequences. A lot of our jobs that I'm normally dealing with has to do with salvage and recovery of sunken objects. So it's slightly different in that um, this is a little bit more critical on how we recover it. Typically, if we're recovering something for a salvage job, the condition in which we bring it up isn't that important. Um, but here, it's, that's the most critical factor is that trying to recover the object without uh, putting our hands all over it and damaging it. 
The execution of all procedures with exact adherence to the plan is essential. Otherwise, operations could go haywire, costing lives and property, and potentially leading to the downfall of the entire industry. With that said, rigorous testing lays the perfect foundation for a more robust industry and ultimately addresses high stakes demands, such as national security and global leadership. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.